Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, William. How are you? Good, good. What's on the menu today? So in the React Native community, there are basically two flavors you can switch in your React Native. You can use TypeScript or not using TypeScript, and you can use Expo or not using Expo. For the first flavor, TypeScript or not TypeScript, it's a bit easy because now TypeScript has become a superset. It's not uh, an extra build step. It's not a different language. It's a superset, fully integrated, thanks to Bubble. It's not a different linter. Now we can use ESLint and so on. So here it's not a big debate to use one or the other. They are, one is just a, sim, a superset of the other, completely seamless. With Expo, things are a bit uh, less seamless. And here there is uh, sometimes a debate on not using Expo or using Expo. On the other hand, the project is evolving so fast, it's hard also to keep up with you know, the latest novelties and whether you should use Expo or not using Expo. So this second flavor, the Expo flavor, is sometimes the cause of debates. Yeah, right. I feel like at the beginning of the project, you're standing at the crossroad and you have to decide which direction to go. And once you've decided for either React Native or Expo, you can't really undo that decision, or at least it's going to be really hard to change your decision afterwards. So unless like TypeScript or JavaScript, where you can like still like change the files afterwards, you have to make this decision at the end, and then you go into one direction and cannot change really your decision after. So I think this is why it's pretty polarizing in the community as well. Do you really believe that it's hard to move from one to the other? Yeah, I think so. So I ejected an Expo app before. Um, to be fair, it was like at SDK 36. Mm. Um, but well, then I felt like all the things fell apart immediately. And I wish I did it in React Native instead. Okay, but hmm, interesting. I feel like... Yeah, so the way Expo can win the hearts and minds of people, I think, is by doing the same strategy than TypeScript, basically. If you become seamless, if it's, you know, not an extra step, if it's not something that can, yeah, where you have to go back and so on, then it's going to be a no-brainer to, to use Expo. I feel like, so first of all, if even if you're doing a React Native CLI project, you still have to use, I mean, you're still going to use Expo modules, right? You're going to use maybe the file system module. The, I mean, there are so many modules part of Expo. And thanks to uni modules, uh, maybe it's an OpenGL Canva. Or, um, a re so reanimated gesture handlers are not Expo modules, but um, I feel like there is a lot of uh, Expo modules which you would use anyways, even if you have a React Native CLI. Yeah, that's true. I use some Expo modules in my pair React Native app and I think this is also the way that they want to that they want to go um, to have like a bare workflow um, which essentially means that you still run your apps over Xcode and Android Studio and you can add all your native modules and this is uh, fine for me um, I use it but in the managed workflow I can't really use it and the main reason that I cannot use Expo is because I need to add, I need to have more control over the native modules. So I looked into my project yesterday and looked at well which parts could I support via Expo and which ones would just like be a deal breaker for me. Mm. And like I at the moment it seems like I use several APIs um, which I could not use in Expo. Um, like the depth sensor of the iPhone, um, copying images to the clipboard, and uh, as well as like sending data to uh, other apps like WhatsApp. Um, these things I could not use with Expo. So for me, unfortunately, I I don't really have a decision decision really. Um, therefore, I choose React Native for all my apps. Mm. 
So it's interesting because, so I feel like either you're running fully managed on Expo and, or you run a React Native CLI plus you can use the Expo modules via Uni modules. But it sounds like having a, how do you call it, a detached Expo project is, is a no-go. Is that? But also maybe we haven't been keeping up with the latest updates and how things work. So, so we, nowadays it looks like that if you eject an Expo, you get a bare workflow Expo um, application, which I suppose is pretty usable. After all, uh, back when I ejected from SDK 36, it was like some custom uh, Expo React Native hybrid. And uh, I've, I had a lot of trouble. Actually, I could not run the app in development mode mm. anymore. I tried to I tried like a day to debug that and could only run the app in uh, release mode. That was not really the fastest development mm. for me. That has been my experience as well, but that was already a couple of years ago. So it was like two years ago. So I'm not sure how things have, have evolved in, in that regard. To be fair, you are a solo developer. So I feel like if you're a solo developer, it's very easy to, you know, to have a React Native project with, you know, where you run on Xcode, Android Studio. Be what I mean is that as soon as, if you're a startup, you have a team, you need to distribute the app to people very quickly they need to if the app is in development mode you need to ship the update over the air and you need also to you have beta tester which might be non-software engineers and for this kind of use case expo is it's a game it's a game changer <laughs> <laughs> it's a, you know it is a game changer and i feel like sometimes people underestimate um the power of having such agility and they go detached immediately from the get-go where I think you lose, especially if you work in a team and maybe you want non-technical people to test your app. Uh, yeah, I feel like Expo is a tremendous tool. Yeah, definitely. I, I see it. I see it as well as a game changer and I get the appeal of Expo. Expo has so many batteries included that makes it so fast to get started. I could like ship my first app in 10 minutes with Expo, which is insane. And you do get really, really far. And for many use cases, it does the job. You can get a super well-functioning prototype and more. You can, you can iterate several times with Expo and some people get by just with Expo. If it's, for example, just an app for loading and displaying data and and submitting and, and stuff. Um, I think if you then at some point get to a level where the app becomes so sophisticated, then you realize, okay, but it's... Then you realize, okay, actually... I should have Expo only used for prototyping. Um, which I think it's still fine. I mean, it will take a migration and you have to copy your files over or maybe yeah. you can eject into a better workflow and that works for you. Mm. But really how I see it is that it's an app for prototyping for, or for shipping an MVP or like getting started. You can definitely go further than that. But as soon as you... I think if you continue with the app, at some point, you will find a reason to eject. Mm. I I remember I've seen some features, you know, just listening to you makes me think about something, but I, again, I haven't been following up. So in 2019, AppGS Conf was great to see the roadmap of Expo and see where things were going. Obviously, this year I got cancelled, but... I've seen around a feature, I think, where you can have your Expo managed project and then it depends on some native features which the Expo client doesn't have. But then you can set up uh, some sort of placeholder or polyfill for it. So you can still run a bare app on Expo clients, which I'm thinking the use case of like if you have a team and a team of non-technical people who are testing your app and maybe, you know, it's an app they take to the field or so, or so on. 
I feel like this can be a, a really an amazing feature. And then you get the over the air, over the air update, and um, this can be, I think, very useful, right? But I, I get it for you as a solo developer. Like you're fine, right? You work on your laptop; everything works all the time. I think it makes so much sense that they are like splitting this up into several building blocks, and I think they realized. It should not just be black and white. You either use Expo Managed or use React Native. Um, so they are now splitting it up and enabling you to like um, live somewhere in between and use some of the Expo services and not all of them. And that is great because now you can pick and choose which parts you wanna you want Expo you want to rely on Expo and which ones you want to handle yourself. Mm. There is, I think, rightfully so, I've seen also, you know, on Reddit and so on, uh, people are also asking questions because Expo is a startup, so a VC-funded uh, company. So obviously, people, if they use Expo, they're using a commercial tool, even though it's free, it's open source. And people have, you know, rightfully so, are checking, you know, uh, where is this going? And uh, because basically they feel tied to to a commercial tool, which is not the case of, uh, of of React Native, which I guess it's, you know, used by Facebook, developed by Facebook. Um, you know that Facebook is not going to sell you commercial services around um, React Native. Where with Expo, you don't know necessarily where things evolve. That being said, there also the contributions they're making to the React Native ecosystem is absolutely mind-blowing. And all, you know, the great modules are support that we, uh, you know, for instance, um, shared element transitions, which I think is a module developed by Expo that brings React Native apps to, this is the kinds of modules that bring React Native apps to high grade quality apps. Reanimated gesture handler, it's software mentioned in partnership with Expo. So there seem also to be strong ties between Expo and, and Software Mention. Um, I think React Navigation, all the modules which make re today's React Native app serious apps uh, are being contributed by Expo. So the, the contributions they're making to the community is absolutely incredible. I totally agree. I and mean, even if you don't use Expo, you have definitely benefited from what they have been doing. Um, so much work, and they are like sponsoring several libraries, for yes. example, React Navigation, which is absolutely amazing. We can use these libraries if we don't use Expo at all, and we benefit from them nonetheless. So I think we have to be grateful, we have to be grateful for Expo. I also feel like the people there are super genuine and great and they want the best for developers. I don't think they are like a classic Silicon Valley VC funded company who is like try to gain a user base and, and then try to monetize. Yes. But I mean, factually, they actually are. And from an, econ maybe it's just like an economical thing in the end where, um, they have to figure out okay how do we how do we build a business out of this yes. i'm i'm sure they have to build a business out of it eventually and i i don't think um they are at the moment even close to sustainable with their um like pro plan yes. which i feel like nobody uses um so but i have faith in them that they're going to they're going to find a good way um but still we have to expect that their model is going to change at some point. Absolutely. I feel like right now, for for Expo to win, React Native ne needs to win. And I think right now they're very much focused on making React Native win first. And then, I guess, the how to monetize the value that was created will come in, in second, I feel like. Absolutely. And, and to be fair, it has worked in the past. Like if you look at companies like MongoDB, I use that totally for free on my own infrastructure. 
um, and benefited a lot from their development. But at the same time, there are they are a billion dollar um, stock exchange listed company, and they are successful. So, I mean, I could see yeah. Expo in in a long term when React Native is really winning. Go that path. We were mentioning the contributions of Expo in our community. A big one we didn't mention yet is React Native Web. React Native Web? Wow, that's that's a big one. That's a big one. I am actually preparing to um, ship my app, which I started on React Native 0.17. So it was like the first day that React Native came out on Android. Mm. With just a few hours of, of investment, I managed to turn the whole app into a website. Um, incredible tool, incredible okay. contribution, and I feel I'm sure React Native is also going to be a big winner. Absolutely, in the future. Absolutely, I'm a I'm a big believer in React Native Web, and one of the reason is that. So the fact that obviously you can run now. So what happened, Re React Native, so what Expo has contributed is that to make sure that all the major modules of in our communities are compatible with run with React Native Web. So it can be React Native Gesture Handler, React Navigation, uh, Reanimated, and, and so on. When, so the web is pretty old, and if you do web development, you have a lot of baggage, right? A lot of... Uh, model box, uh, display modes, different defaults for each element and so on. And when React Native came out, they removed right, all the legacy. You used only the latest things, right? Flexbox, everything has the same default and so on. And so you have a much more modern and lean model to, to build your, your React Native apps. And I feel like React Native Web is bringing back the this simplified and linear model back to the web and plus obviously you have the the right once right anywhere approach but i feel like now even if i wanted to build a web app a progressive web app which will only be a progressive web app with no plans to go native i might still be using uh react native web i will probably use react native web so i think react native web is definitely Brings so much modernization to the web, so much things you don't yes. have to worry about. Like if you think about what you have previously included in your um, website, like polyfills and normalized CSS and all that stuff, mm -hmm. um, you get for free this time. And it's also so open. I actually use React Native Web with my custom Webpack configuration. Uh, yes, doesn't rely on Expo at all. I can include fast refresh. Uh, and still keep it super lean. Very happy how this is going. So w one last thing about you know the quick prototyping from Expo and so on. I really believe, so what I've seen from in the field, obviously, so I've seen two things in the field, that obviously if Expo doesn't fit uh, every for every project. This is clear. But I have also noticed that people underestimate the agility and the economical gains you can make by using Expo and by using the, to have this web agility in your React Native project where you know things are updated over the, the hair and you, you can have like run a native app as if you were downloading a, a web page. I, I've seen also that people were underestimating the benefits of Expo and didn't use Expo or didn't try to push for Expo in, in early stage of development. And I feel like this has increased the uh, the cost of some app, app project. Absolutely. I mean, if I if it would be my money that would be spent on making an app, and I guess I don't want to... I want to create, like, for example, an e-commerce app or nothing that, like, requires the device APIs so much or I feel like it's it's just like a standard app which doesn't have many special requirements I would probably choose Expo mm. um, because I can spend so much time and with time 
I save so much money. Yes. And everybody wants that. Yeah. And today you can give a workshop on building a native app with no tools to install on your laptop. So you can take a bunch of people, sit, sit them down on the table, and you can build a, a native app with them and without any software to install via Snack. Absolutely. I, I also felt like Expo has gained so much popularity with people who can maybe not afford the biggest laptop. I mean, in some countries, like buying a MacBook for, I would say, if you want to develop on Xcode and Android Studio, you need to spend at least $1,500 to get a decent development experience. And you could get much, much higher. And some people can just not afford that. And Absolutely. We have to be grateful that they are being enabled to create these apps and get started. And maybe they get into it, they get the chance, and in the future they, they land jobs and can then upgrade later. Um, for that, I think Expo is also a great thing that happened. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. It's uh, the fact also, yeah, that you don't have to use Xcode. And in the early stage, you don't even have to buy the Apple developer license. So you can buy it only once you're ready and once, you know. And yeah, again, so React Native, you come in with web development skills. So if you know web development, you can build native apps thanks to React Native. And then Expo that adds the web-like agility. So over the air updates and the fact that you can have dynamic apps essentially through the Expo clients, that's uh, no need for Xcode and so on. No native uh, build step, but that's incredible. And Expo, I think, is really doing a great job. They want React Native to win, and I feel like they're doing a, a great job at it, making incredible contributions and, and modules.